What is up guys, it is the Sound Alchemist, and today I'm back to bring you those 40 facts on the Warhammer 40k universe. However, today we are going to do a fan lore. If you're not aware of what that is or what it entails, basically fan lore is your own interpretation of a Space Marine chapter, or any chapter for that matter, it doesn't even have to be Space Marines or Imperium. It could be a Tau Cadre, a Tyranid Hive Fleet Splinter that is your own. Pretty much you're working with the lore of 40k and molding it into something different, something that you have created. And uh, we actually have a whole playlist on the channel about 40k fan lores. Um, as you would guess, most of those are uh, Primaris, or not Primaris, <laughs> Space Marine chapters that you guys have created. And uh, some of the lore is pretty badass. So uh, after this video, go to our playlist and check out the fan lores. They're really amazing. If you guys want us to cover your fan lore, the best place would be to reach us on our Facebook page. Hit us up with a message or you know, let us know what type of fan lore you want us to cover. And um, if we have time and hopefully we can get to it. So without further ado, let's dive into this fan lore. This lore was sent to us by Matt T. The Ice Dragons is a chapter of Adeptus Astarte that hail from the frozen death world of Paulus. They appeared during the second founding, and they are surprisingly a successor chapter to that of the Salamanders. But unlike the Salamanders, who have a habit of using flamers and incendiary weapons, the Ice Dragons use weapons that were reverse engineered from Hellfrost weapons that were given to them by the Space Wolves as a gift for helping them stop a chaotic invasion. These weapons are often called Freezers and Flash Frieza Guns. These weapons work very similar to that of Flamers and Melta, but instead of melting away the enemy, they instantly freeze them, making them brittle and easily shattered when struck. Their relations with their parent chapter is surprisingly very good, despite their difference in their taste of weaponry. They believe that the Salamander's fire balances with their ice, and in fact, they enjoy fighting by their fellow battle brothers in every chance that they are able to. They are also on very good terms with the Space Wolves, due to the Ice Dragons introducing them to their Fire Wind, and also by staving off that Chaos Invasion. However, this campaign was sealed by the Order of the Ordos Hereticus of the Inquisition. The Ice Dragons have a particular way of belief, and while they do follow the Codex Astarte, they see it more of a guideline than concrete rules, and they feel that it's better for one to think for themselves in battle. Their battle tactics are a mixture of long-range and short-range combat. They will open fire with their combi bolt weapons while they work their way up to their objective. In the rare chance that the enemy can charge through the hail of storm of bolts and ice blasts, then they will switch over to melee combat. Just like the Salamanders, they are known for making modifications to their weaponry, such as adding scopes, large ammo capacity magazines, and all forms of bayonets. Some even have their own version of Hellfire ammunition called the Frost Blight. When fired, the solution in the round activates when exposed to the heat of the propellant being set off and the pressure of the round being sent through the air. The projectile itself looks no different to that of the Hellfire round, but when fired, the projectile pierces through the armor of the target and then detonates inside like a standard bolt round. But instead of making a massive explosive mess, the chemical compound in this bolt freezes everything it touches, absorbing all of that heat energy in the target, causing it to explode into a blast of frozen blood and ichor as well as shrapnel being made from the armor of the victim, slicing with frozen flesh. The power armor of the Ice Dragons is that akin to the Salamander armor. However, it is colored with a icy blue instead of a dark green, and also it has white serpentine dragon scales on their right pauldrons. Amongst the many famous Ice Dragon Astarte members is their most famous, the Terminator Squad Captain, Indigo Vermilion. 
Vermilion's deeds in the war on the hive world, Kreia, against the Waw of war boss Brain Blast Brum Crumpa, became legend, where he held Hell's Highway, a narrow kilometer long corridor giving entry to the hive city from the outer wastelands by himself, only with a heavy bolter and several landmines as well as a turret that he salvaged from a Lehman Rust tank. With his strategical mind, he turned it into an orc blender of death, killing any orc waiting for reinforcements to arrive. And finally when they did, they drove the horde out of the hive city, Eros, and they finally killed the war boss, Bum Krumpa. Bum Krumpa's Wall was the second largest to face the Imperium since the Wall of Gaskol Orakthraka, and because of this, he was awarded the Polis Ice Cross by the chapter master, Glacius Maul. However, there are factions that are met with dislike and distrust, and sometimes outright hostility by the Ice Dragons. This goes as such. The Angels of Brutality and the Marines Malevolent are often seen as heretical for the ways that they mistreat civilians, including the populaces of their chapter homeworlds. The Inquisition is also on this list because they see them as too secretive and untrustworthy. The Black Templars, for their dogmatic beliefs, and the killing of innocent imperial citizens for something as small and petty as heterochromia and other light and non-significant mutations. The Minotaurs, because of their excessive collateral damage that they bring about in all their campaigns, as well as the Angry Marines, for always being so angry and yellow. And finally, the Wolves of Repentance, for all the innocents they have killed throughout the years. Other than these factions that I just named, the Ice Dragons get along just fine with just about everyone else in the Imperium, and they are also well respected by their allies, by both their fellow Astartes and non-Astartes. And with that being said, that was the fan lore for the Ice Dragons. So let Matthew know what you guys think about his awesome Legion of Astartes, and let him know also how he can improve upon the lore. I, for one, really, really enjoy the way you've created the weapons of ice, and just, just the thought of it, like the way the bolt round explodes inside of them, and they blow up in a spray of frozen ichor and power armor is just amazing. Uh, just the thought of it in my head looks pretty cool. And uh, the other thing that I really enjoyed about your fan lore is the names of the no of the characters. Glacius Maul? That sounds badass. Um, so again, guys, let them know down in the comments what you thought about his fan lore. And don't forget to check out the playlist for other awesome fan lores. If you guys want to send us your lore, send it over to the Facebook page. There should be a link down in the description below. If not, find uh, One Mind Syndicate on Facebook. Um, so yeah, that's all I got for today, guys. Um, leave a like, comment, and don't forget to subscribe for more 40k lore. This has been the Sound Alchemist, part of One Mind Syndicate, and I'll see you guys in the next one.